do you believe we are experiencing a Christian renaissance? I have no idea. I mean, all I can, I can, all I can account to is my own experience in this, in this field. I know that for the past year, I've been taking on this crazy journey that I didn't expect at all. Uh, and by now, I'm getting emails every day. And the emails are basically the, the, there's a pattern, the emails are the same. And it's, I have a vague religious upbringing and became an atheist, Sam Harris style in college, discovered Jordan Peterson, realized religion isn't stupid, discovered your videos and thought, wow, okay. And now, like, I want to go to church. And it's like, I don't know, I have no idea. Like, I don't know what numbers those represent. Like, I don't know how many people write me and how many people who are going through that don't write me. Um, but for sure, as a person, I believe that to, to, to dive back, I mean, that I stake my entire life on this, being an icon carver and talking about the things that I've talked about tonight are completely related together. I believe that the, the underlying uh, grammar that was developed in Christianity, especially in the first 1,000 years, the underlying relationships of, of symbols is like an algebra, and, it, and it, uh, it's like a mesh through which we can look at the world. And I think that to recover that to the extent that it's possible is one of the solutions out of our morass. And so I've staked my own, yeah, my life on that, so, yeah. Yeah, well, I, I mean, it was a surprise to me when I learned, say, 30 years ago, that our cognitive architecture and our perceptual architecture were, were grounded in this grammar that Jonathan referred to, and that there's no escaping from it. You can either understand it or not understand it. If you don't understand it, you live as a mess of internal contradictions, and that, that paralyzes you in many ways. You're a house divided within itself. These archetypal stories, let's say Christian or not, but certainly they're Christian insofar as the West is predicate, the West is a society predicated on those stories. They're, they're inescapable and of ultimate value. They're the, because they lay out the patterns. This is actually the point of them. They lay out the pattern of being that enables you to maintain nobility and sanity in the face of suffering and evil. Now, if you don't believe in suffering or evil, then, well, you don't have a problem. But you're not very bright if you don't believe in those two things. I mean, you're just, like, you're naive beyond belief. And you need an antidote to, to those forces, because they'll tear you apart. And the, the question is, is there an antidote? And, that, and the answer is, well, there's a best path forward anyways. And the idea that the best path forward has something to do with shouldering your cross and taking responsibility for your own malevolence is there isn't a better answer that anyone has ever come up with than that. So now are we experiencing a Christian renaissance? I have the same feeling as Jonathan. Who, who, they, who knows? Like, More than a year ago. Um, uh, I should probably let you go on here so I don't say what I'm about to say, which is going to get me in a lot of trouble, I have a feeling. But um, maybe we're going through a Christian renaissance, but we shouldn't. It's not a good idea. Um, and that is not to say that there are not a tremendous number of values to be rescued from Christianity, as there are from any ancient tradition that has survived into the present. However, I would say, if there's one thing I'm convinced of um, as an evolutionary biologist who has been very focused on human beings, it is that there is no ideology that we can pull off the shelf that is adequate to our present circumstances. So whatever it is, it's gonna be a 3.0 or a 4.0 version. It's not gonna be the version that we have available to us now. And that is, that is not to argue that the versions that we have now are not wisdom from a past era. They just simply aren't up to the challenge. 